This is the power of S-Log2. It's pretty impressive how well it preserves the details in the highlights. But I wonder if we can push the dynamic range just a bit more, you know, to get the exposure more even. Oh, well, there you go. Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be diving deeper into the Sony picture profiles to see if we could get more out of its dynamic range. Almost every Sony alpha shooter out there loves to talk about the dynamic range of the S-Log picture profiles. As a quick refresher, dynamic range is a measurement of the difference between the bright parts and the dark parts of an image. The higher the dynamic range, the more details you'll be able to preserve in the shadows and highlights. Oppositely, if the dynamic range is lower, you're going to have to decide which end of the spectrum to expose for, either the shadows or the highlights, but not both. On the Sony a6300, I personally use S-Log2 the most. Even though S-Log3 is available for more dynamic range, in my experience, I find it just a little bit more troublesome to work with in post. Generally speaking, the more dynamic range you have, the more evenly you could expose and the more professional your footage is going to look. Having said all that, I wanted to see if there was a way to expose for everything and have a completely balanced image using S-Log2. And here's what I was able to pull off. You'll see when compared to S-Log2, this technique results in not just the preservation of highlight details, but correct exposure of those details to match the exposure of what's going on inside. Now, how'd I do this? You're really not going to like the answer, and it should be obvious, it's just masking. But it is masking in a much more efficient way where you're not going to spend days keyframing the whole clip in order to pull this off. We're gonna go into Premiere Pro. So in the timeline, we have a clip already graded to our liking. As we can see in the windows, the trees and other objects outside are not completely lost in the highlights, but they don't quite match the exposure of the inside. They're a bit too bright, unsaturated, with no contrast. We want to get it to look like this. So here's what we do. We duplicate this clip and put it right on top. Then we adjust the exposure for the highlights so the details in the windows are properly exposed. All right, easy enough. Now for the masking and tracking. Normally, we would create a mask around what we want and then keyframe each frame adjusting the mask as we went along. The problem with this is that it takes forever and the mask is never precise enough to go unnoticed. Because we're making manual adjustments each frame, the mask will be dancing around and it'll be too obvious. Instead, here's what we're going to do to cut our time by more than half and to have smoother tracking. We're going to select the top clip and then go to the beginning of that clip and create a mask. Then go to the end of that clip and adjust the mask to fit. Now this alone already gives us a good starting point because the mask knows where to start and where to end. And because there are no keyframes in between to interrupt that mask as it travels from point A to point B, it's going to track very smoothly. All we have to do now is adjust the mask only at the points where the tracking is lost. So let's start with the halfway point and adjust that. And then go quarter of the way and adjust that. And we're going to go in between each keyframe to see where the imperfections are and then adjust accordingly. Now, depending on how complex your camera movement is, you really shouldn't need too many keyframes to adjust that mask. Even if there are a lot of points where the tracking was lost, it's still going to be significantly less time and less work than manually keyframing from start to finish. Now begs the question, is this technique worth it to fake dynamic range? If you have a project that you're trying to make look super professional, I say go for it. In my opinion, having less highlights that are blown out is going to give a more professional look. However, if the windows are small and there's really nothing to see, I would probably pass on this. But that's all up to you. Try it out, let me know in the comments below what kinds of projects you would use this for. If you found this video informational or at the very least entertaining, show me some love and hit that like button. If you'd like to see more videos just like this where I share my experiences with videography, consider subscribing. This is Kevin Mendoza. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.